The reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Something. I, I was preaching one time, brother, eight folk came. Yeah, seven brothers one, that was it. And I preached like it was 8,000 out there. And somebody said, man, how did you preach to a crowd that small? And preach like that, I said, because I don't preach by the crowd. I preach by the Holy Ghost. You can give me a crowd of 500 and no Holy Ghost, and I won't be able to do nothing. But give me five folks and the Holy Ghost. See, I know what Wilbur Worth was talking about. When he said he'd rather have the Holy Ghost on it for five minutes than to have the world with a fence around it. Because you get the Holy Ghost on you for five minutes, or you can raise the dead. That's why Jesus Christ didn't move when they sent that letter down there, because he didn't have no option to function. But when the option came, the man was dead, the tomb was sealed, but it didn't make Jesus any difference. Because he knew the option of the Holy Ghost, it'll raise the dead, it'll roll the stone away, it'll cause the mummies to be unwrapped, it'll cause funeral trains to stop, it'll cause deaf ears to come open, blind eyes to be open, lame limbs to be made whole, the very dead will be raised, because it's an option, and we're in a day now when the option is a must. For one check your credentials to find out what Bible college you come out of, what professor you sit on, how many degrees you got. Man, you can have more degrees than a demonic. That ain't gonna move the devil. The devil don't run from your degrees. The devil ain't care. You can have a DD, a PhD, a BA. You can have pray got a theological degree. The devil don't care if you got a master's degree. But I want you to know, praise God, you can when you got degrees on your wall, the devil gonna thump you upside your educated head. But bless God, if you get on your knees and get a hope to God, get in touch with the Holy Ghost, get tired with the Holy Ghost. When that monkey meets you, you walk out there and you tell the devil, say, my PhD is power to heal diseases. That's what he's going to see you. But when the monkey be somebody anointed of the Holy Ghost, his knees are tapped together like tap by the keys. Because he understands it's the Holy Ghost that's going to break the yoke. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to cast him out. Information can't cast him out. But inspiration will cast him out. And the devil fears a man that's walking in the word. That's walking in the spirit. That's nothing got more than just a letter. But has got a hope of that living Holy Ghost. But when the devil sees a man like that, when you wake up in the morning, the devil says, oh my God, he's getting up. He wish he could kill you in his sleep, but he's scared. So come in, let me tell you something. See, some of y'all ain't gonna believe this. But there's a preacher overseas in Trinidad by the name of Tarnell Nelson. The man's bold as a bull. He went to Africa to preach for the tongue, and they put him in a place to go to sleep. He got in the bed, and by the time he got to sleep, he was a demon. He woke up, Pastor. And God let him see in the spiritual realm. He looked face to face with the demon. He said, Devil, if you don't get out of this bed, I'm a man dog. The devil said, No, the owner of this house gave me permission. I got a right to be here. He said, Devil, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to go wake up the master of the house to find out who you're supposed to be here. But since we both got permission to be here, then we both got permission to be in this bed. I'm sleeping on this side, you sleep on that side, and if I turn over, you jump out and run around. Don't you touch me tonight. But the man of God told the devil, he said, devil, don't nobody wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning but my wife. He said, even God speak to me in a dream. Don't you touch me tonight. You know why? He let the devil know I'm not afraid of you. Why? The man had an option. But it ain't just being cocky. You got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have the power of God. Ooh, you got to have the Holy in your life to move up under the power of the Holy Ghost. Because that's what God is. Hallelujah. And some of the folks I know would have got up and got on the cellular phone. Pastor Tom, come to my house. That was another man of God. Got to India. 
And they sacrificed to the gods, and they threw the gods' food, the devil's food, at the door of the bank. The man of God got out of the car, and he had this chicken with his head cut off with a bunch of old livers and stuff, right in the door of the bank. And the people were all standing around. And the man of God walked up there, kicked it out the way, and walked in the bank. They said, oh, he's going to die. He kicked the God's food. The demon's going to get him. He went in the bank, did his transaction, came back out. Somebody had put it back there. He kicked it out the way again. When they got in the car, you know what they did? They went to his crusade. They didn't want to see him die. They went to his crusade that night. He got up and started preaching on the power of the blood of Jesus. 25,000 got saved. They were trying to figure out what kind of man is this? What kind of man is this? That don't fear the devil. It's a man full of the Holy Ghost. It's a man of God. But I'm not talking about being cocky. I ain't talking about being arrogant. I'm talking about knowing who you are in Christ. Walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. Standing up. Looking at the devil in his eyes. Let the devil know greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Brother, we in a time now. Folks, I got the Holy Ghost. Oh, that ain't no Holy Ghost. That ain't no more fanaticism. Oh. The Holy Ghost is on me. Where is the Holy Ghost? Up? When the devil put a knot upside your head. Where is the Holy Ghost? Up? When the devil put the hickeys on your head. Where is the Holy Ghost? Up? When your head is beating you upside the head. Where is the Holy Ghost? Up? When the fear is robbing you. Where is your shaking Holy Ghost there? <laughs> When you get an option, you can function. You can practice the style. You can practice standing like the preacher. You can buy the same microphone he got, same PA set, same kind of shoes, get the same kind of truck. But honey, if you don't get the same one, that you in trouble. But what did Elijah tell Elijah? He said, when you leave, I want twice that anointing. Keep your mantle. I want that anointing. Keep your PA set. I want that anointing. Keep your cordless mic. I want that anointing. Because he knew I can't function without the unction. And that's what Jesus knew. He didn't have fallen around with him when he left. He said, go tarry. Tarry till you be in down. But they've been called to preach. They've been called to preach. But what did Jesus say? Don't you preach until you get it down. What did Jesus was Jesus for 30 years? He was reading the word for 30 years. But what did he say? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have not because he called me to preach. See, preachers are, I know I've been called. Big deal. Have you been sent? Because you don't send a person until you equip them. You call your son and say, come here, Junior. He heard his daddy's voice. He come to his daddy's side. And you said, Daddy, I want you to go down to Kroger. He told him not just a store, but a Pacific store. And I want you to purchase two dozen of eggs, two gallons of milk, and two slabs of bacon. He take off. You ain't giving no money. He get down to Kroger. How many know he can't function without the auction? He can't perform. He can go down and look at it, but he can't get it. That's where some of these preachers are. God called and they took off. But I want you to know the Bible said that the definition said a specific assignment. And there are some preachers that are called to preach faith. And you get them off faith, they'll make a mess up every time. There are some that's called to preach deliverance, but faith seems so popular. Let me tell you something that happened in our nation. Brother, that's preachers that's called to preach just like I'm preaching, but it ain't fashionable. It's the teacher that's the best one now. So everybody now wants to get out of there call it and go over here and teach but the difference between a teacher and a preacher trying to teach is the teacher is anointed to teach and the preacher has stepped into an office where he doesn't have an option so his teaching is dry it's confusing it's thin I want you to understand that's why the Bible said make your calling and election sure when you understand what you call to do well when you let me tell you something some of you preachers and I can identify with this you can literally have symptoms in your body that say you sick as a dog. Your vision can be blurred. But you can walk out there, past the study, sit on that pulpit, feeling like I ain't gonna make it. But it's something about getting to that place you call. Stand up behind that podium and in five minutes you got strength out of somewhere you don't know where it come from. You preach like a man ain't never been sick before in his life. Why? Because that anointing comes on you. Whether you get through preaching, get back in the study, sit down 25 minutes, and that anointing lift and you feel all them symptoms back again. Why? You had an unction to function. That's what I'm talking about. Whether this thing is done by the unction of the Holy Ghost. And God is showing me more and more every day. Style makes no difference. It's the unction that's going to make the difference. You got to get in that place. That's why I asked God. I said, God, give me the right message every night. I don't want to go back in a fire pack and put up a message. You give me 
what the folks need. Sometimes I go a year and never preach the same message twice. Then sometimes God will give me a message like he gave me a message called who told you that? But I done preached who told you that in about five or six states. Why? Because that's what God said the folk need to hear. You got to learn to go with God. And at the time, praise God, God, God gave me this message two years ago. I ain't preaching no more until this very night. Why? Because the Holy Ghost didn't say preaching no more. That's what I'm talking about. But when you get the auction upon you and you're throwing that auction, it'll bring deliverance to folks. It'll set the captives free. But we're in a time right now when preachers are opening up their Bible looking for stuff to preach. Instead of getting in the closet, getting the hope to God, and getting the word from God, I found out one word from God to change your life. Huh? Why? Because it takes the unction. See, the anointing takes you to sweatless victory. That's one thing I found out. I have watched people wrestle with demons. And God has blessed me. I have never wrestled with a demon. It has never taken me more than two minutes to cast out a devil. One man of God said, I'll go forward. This ain't got the right devil. They didn't make the right devil. They made the wrong devil. I got the right God. But what the problem is, I don't jump on the devil just because somebody sitting in the back and growl like a bird. See? That's why I don't prophesy to you because your faith belongs to this microphone. Sit there and look like Paul Willie if you want to. I ain't telling you nothing if the Holy Ghost don't speak to me. See, that's what's wrong. Preachers move by what they see. Brother Charles told me about one sister, man of God, called her out and proper lied, and she looked at him and she said, that ain't God, that's you, that's what you think. She said, no, that ain't God. You know what? And we had some more sisters like that at the end of this stuff ago. Yes, sir. That guessing would be... You don't think about two of those. Yes, sir. So this is what I'm saying. When God moves on me to move on a demon, I know I got the upper hand. The devil ain't got no choice. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. There's a man of God one time. He's in the service. And God spoke to him. I'm going to open them blind eyes. He went out there. Laid hands on the blind man, and they were just like prophesying. Eyes popped open. He got emotional, turned around, and snatched the woman out of the wheelchair. She fell on him. He said, Woman, you gonna walk? You believe you can walk? She said, Well, no, I can't walk. I don't know. Bless God. I'm a man of God. You're gonna get out this chair. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Y'all don't get this woman off me. She fell on, pinned him on the floor. He got that woman. Y'all come get this sister off me. You know what happened? He got in the flesh. God said he's opening blind eyes. He said, nothing about wheelchairs. Learn to go with the flow of God. See, Oprah stood out there and said, if he was a man of God, he had, let me tell you something. It don't matter what folks say. You know what God is telling you to do, and you can only function where your function is. Amen. I'll be under the tent sometimes, and hit them over, they get on me, both ears start popping over, then folks say, come pray for Grandma. I get there, Grandma got leukemia. Well, I was going to open their ears. But well, if you was a man of God that could heal folks, you'd go to the hospital and clean it out. Not without the unction you want. Right. I've been in the hospital a couple of times. Me and Brother Foster went up there with the oil bottle, and God was cleaning out the wards. But well, praise God, it only happened twice. Right. Why? The unction was there. Right. Now I can go back up there tomorrow with the same oil bottle and get not the same results. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Learn how to flow with the unction. When God see, that's why, well, let me show you, this preacher was coming out of Walmart. Ain't had his mind on no healing. And a woman pulled up with a little baby in a stroller. And when the baby rolled by the preacher, compassion rose up in him and he felt the Spirit of God in him literally do a flip. He just stopped. He said, Lady, he said, You don't know me. I'm Reverend so and so. He didn't tell him who he was. He said, I'm looking at your baby and I see your child is deformed. He said, Listen, I don't want to embarrass you. He said, Now, I know you're paying a lot of doctor bills for this baby. He said, Right. She said, He's on a stranger. You don't know me. He said, well, listen, it won't hurt for me to pray for that child. So you walk by me, the Holy Ghost told me to pray for that baby. Who well, can I pray for your child? Now, your child, is obviously the baby is sick. It's obviously the baby is under doctor's care. I'm not going to try to keep prayer. I just want to pray for this baby because the Holy Ghost told me to pray for your baby. And you know, you don't want no strength to touch your child. But the woman listened to the man. He had to talk to him for five or ten minutes. And she looked at him. And she said, well, what could it hurt? And right there in front of Walmart. The preacher laid his hands on a baby, bones twisted, spinal cords twisted, the baby slobbering. Laid his hands on that baby in the name of Jesus, and the mother began to weep as she heard her baby's bones popping in the Walmart parking lot because her preacher was functioning in the auction. But that's what I'm talking about. When you throw with God, preacher got in his car, never had another miracle like that in all of his ministry. Never got one in his, in his service, but at Walmart, 
God says, stop and give up, baby, a miracle. See, this thing ain't for glamour and glory. It's not for show. It's called obedience to God. When you, let me tell you something. There's a mother somewhere right now that I don't care what they say on TV, she know God is real. Say what you want to, criticize every preacher in the world. But she knows there's one preacher somewhere. I don't know where he is, but she knows there's a preacher somewhere. That's got the good. It's the God that he served, every time she look at that baby, you can't tell her there ain't no God. You can't tell that, that every time that mom look at that child, she know that is a God. She said, I've been a preacher. I bet she might not even know my friend's name anymore. But one thing she do know, his God was all faith. Because every time she look in that little bedroom, she know that there is a baby that the doctors had given up on. Was supposed to be there with the rest of his life. But no God's loved him so much. He said, son, stop right here. In Walmart's parking lot, give a baby a miracle. That's what I mean when I say function with the unction. It ain't all about getting up in the prayer line in front of everybody in church calling folks out. Yes, God may put you on the telephone talking to somebody. I walked through the house one night, Pastor Tom. We was down in Marianna, Arkansas. I'll never forget it. Evangelist Farrell Barnes on the telephone talking to a woman out in Houston, Texas. I got a glass of water, was getting ready to go back in prayer, walk down the hall, and stop. God spoke the woman's name to me. I turned around and asked him, I said, you talking to a lady named so-and-so? He said, yeah. She had a text. He said, yeah, to give me the phone. He said, there's a man of God walking down here, called your name in the state you live in. He got something to tell you. I got on the phone, prophesied to the woman. She started crying and weeping. She put a friend on the phone. I prophesied to her. She broke and cried. The next night, they called the preacher back, and I was in there. He said, she said, go get that man of God. Tell him, I got another friend in either world. You tell that woman, God ain't speaking to me tonight. He said, well, she believes if you get on the phone, you'll get a word. I said, I ain't getting on that phone. I said, when I get a word, I'll get on the phone. And they didn't understand that. Why don't he put on God? I ain't putting on God for you. If God will tell you something, God will speak to me, and I'll speak to you. You put on God, and God put on me. But I ain't going to go. That's how folks get over into a bunch of mess. Get on up for me, your spirits. See, we got some folks got a word for you every day. Every time they see, oh, oh, oh. The Lord. <laughs> God ain't got to go through 99 changes to speak to you. But that's what you call deep folk. Them folk don't have an unction. See, when you get an unction, most folk that get an unction, they reverence it and they kind of reserved about speaking. And most of them, the only reason they speak is because God told them to. They tell you, I don't mean to bother you, but listen, we was in, what was we at? Burlington, Iowa. And a man of God, a friend of mine, who was preaching for the full gospel business. Leader. And we went out to Perkins restaurant that night to eat. And I told him, I said, the Lord spoke to me to break my fast and let's go home tonight. They said, man, the hotel paid for another full day. We done had everybody home. We just rest. Our wife won't expect us for another day. I said, yeah, I understand that. But the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, get out of town. He said, brother, I've been fasting longer than you have. He said, I ain't heard that. I said, well, that's the difference between me and you. I was in there when God spoke. God spoke to me. God told me to break the fast. And since we all ride in the same car, God ain't got people but one person. So he said, well, okay, man. Uh, we're going to go. He said, I ain't heard that, but I believe in the man of God. Went to the restaurant. I ordered some fish. We sat down. And Brother Johnny sat down. And this other man of God. All of a sudden, I knew this was good. Whenever God come on, his eyes bought me get big. We were sitting there. And I looked up, and my eyes were shining like gold. I go, oh, God, he's in the cross. He was looking way across the restaurant. And here it is, these three black brothers sitting over here. And here go two little white sisters sitting over there. And this big old tall, bug eyed black man said, Excuse me, I gotta go prophesy with this woman over there. In the restaurant. I told Brother John, I said, What? There you go. He got up, walked over there, Brother Tom, introduced himself to the woman, told him who he was, where he was from. After he sit down for a minute, he got him talking about the Lord. He said, well, what I really came over here for, lady, you get ready to go back to school. And the Lord don't want you to go back to school. He wants you to go on in your ministry. She looked at him and said, well, now wait a minute. It is God. She said, you know, I'm just getting my tired of all these folks telling me what God is saying. I got to know this really God. He said, excuse me, turn to her friend and it's a sign to you that I'm hearing God. I said, woman, you want to play the piano. You ain't never took a lesson in your life, but I see you sitting and looking at it. Some days you cry, you want to play it so bad. He said, for a sign to your friend, the night when you go home, sit down and God going to anoint you to play the piano. She started crying. The other sister just threw her hands up right there at the restaurant. Why? The man had an unction to function. I'm bringing it on the floor, but I'm going to show you something. This same preacher was in Carverville, Kansas. 
And you know they got that lowest arc. Right. Mm -hmm. He went up in the ark and they got the little elevator in the ark. Got on the elevator, him and another preacher. They were on a 21 day fast. They got in the back of the elevator, leaned up against the wall, and they was back there praying in tongues. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost spoke. He looked at this little frail looking sister, you know, little Caucasian woman. He said, Woman, the Holy Ghost speaks to me. You got a problem in your back and a tumor, and God is going to give you a miracle. And before she could say yes or no, he slapped hands on her. The power of God healed she screamed and fell out in the floor of the elevator. And this big old tall white guy was standing there, and he was looking like, you know, what you doing to that little woman? And the other brother turned around and looked at him and said, sir, before you get an attitude, throw your hands up, because you got to slip this in your back, and God don't give you a miracle. Good God, lady, he was a little bit Hallelujah. Glory to the little bit Hallelujah. Brother, lay your hands on that man. God healed the man. Another brother said, pray for me, man. I'm sick. Brother, when the elevator doors swung open up, what was laying in the floor? These two black guys were laying hands on folks in the elevator. Power of God knocked them down in the floor. The power of God was healing folks in the elevator. Then all of a sudden, my friend stepped out of, and the lady that was running the cash register, the cashier was sitting there, and she looking like this. And good God, she didn't know what to think about it. He stepped out and said, lady, you got trouble in your home. And God to give you a miracle. Throw your hands up, woman. That's a proper sign to that woman. The power of God hit her. She got the dance in her. He stood there and watched the characters while she gave God the praise. I'm talking you got that. You got to have the oxen to function. Brother, when you go with the flow, y'all don't hear me. When you learn to go with the flow of God, but I don't think you might be in Walmart. It don't make God no difference. Somebody might need a miracle, can't get to the tent. God may tell you to slap your hands on them right here. Why? That's when you function with the auction. But what we want to do, we want to get it in the nice and form with three or four catchers to catch them if they fall out. God can knock you out in Walmart's power flow and you won't feel a thing. But how many of God don't have to knock you down to heal you? God can heal you without you crying. God can heal you without you running. But if you feel like running, go ahead. You heal. Yeah. All I want you to do is function with the unction. But if once you grieve it, you keep grieving the Holy Ghost. He ain't speak to you no more. He go on to somebody that's small. That just just obey whatever he say, whatever he say. And here you is with that big old minister if you want to. Why God do a speech to me like that? Because every time he used to, you wouldn't obey it. Your reputation was on the line. See, whenever you get the floor, I've seen it time and time again. So many things. I've seen a man of God take a woman, had a tumor, fall in this big old long fist up, said, Mama, I'm going to hit you in your belly and knock the tumor out of you. And she said, Go ahead. Folks said, Not that now. I know God ain't telling that man hit that little woman in her stomach. But he drew back in the name of Jesus Christ. Bam! In Jesus' name. She screamed, I can feel it. Her skirt fell and had to wrap it in the sheet. Tumor gone just that quick. It's melted away. Why? Next one, he prayed over the tumor. He said, lay his hands on God didn't say punch everybody that got a tumor. Because you punch one person, you don't try to punch everybody, you'll get a lawsuit on you. No, he hit me and I ain't healed or hurt. We be flowing with God. I don't have God tell me, stay 30 feet from folks and just point your finger at the power of God and knock him down. They get up crying, testifying how they was healed. Then I don't see them fall in the floor. God said, go over there and lay it. They already down to go lay your hands on, transfer that among them through their body so they can be made whole. See, you got to learn to go with God. Flow with the unction of the Holy Ghost. And as you flow like that, it don't matter what your skeptics say. Because you know what they say in Acts chapter 4? A notable miracle has been done, and we can't deny it. See, it didn't matter in 1984, it didn't matter how many folk in Connecticut say I wasn't real. A 64-year-old woman, they got healed of emphysema and went back to her doctor, and her doctor took her off her oxygen and told her she had long like a 30-year-old woman. And then anything you telling her that I ain't real, because to her, all she know is I couldn't breathe when he got here, and I can breathe since he's gone. So you can say what you want to. And you know, it's, it's always the Pharisee that say he ain't no prophet. Don't argue with the Pharisees. Let's preach to the common folks. See? Did I find out something? If that Pharisee gets sick enough, yeah. he'll remember your phone number. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, let me tell you a dangerous story about that. I'm going to try to close with this. There's a man of God in Memphis, Tennessee. He was preaching on a strong anointing. A woman walked in, was known all over Memphis, was singing. 
beautiful, melodious voice. They call it a songbird of the midst of This man of God had a vision by the word of knowledge and saw a growth in my throat. How many know an x ray can find something that you ain't even felt yet? But when a man of God finds it, he doesn't miss God. The doctor, a heathen, fucking a sick God, can look in there and find it and you believe him. But here's a man of God living holy, fast in the plane. He see by the eye of God. Oh, I don't believe that. Call the woman I prophesied to if the Lord shows me there's trouble in the bottom of your throat. He said, down by your esophagus, I see a black spot that's a growth. God wants to give you a miracle. If you come up here, I lay my hands on you, God, and give you a miracle. She said, okay. What is wrong with my voice, sir? He said, lady, I ain't guessing. He said, I'm seeing by the Holy Ghost. You need to come up here tonight. And the pastor knew the woman so well. Instead of him believing in this man of God, they tried to mock the man of God by letting the woman sing a song when he got through. When the man of God got through, as if to show him you miss God, they called her up, gave her the mic, oh, she shook the church. They were shouting and rejoicing 12 months later. The man was awakened at 2 o'clock in the morning. A hoarse, grasping voice on the other end of the phone. He could not have made it out. And I'm not going to tell you the preacher's name, but she said, Brother, do you remember? She's talking like, Do you remember about 12 months ago? You were in Memphis, Tennessee, and you called out this woman and said there was a growth in her throat. I'm the woman. I'm in the hospital today. I'm dying with cancer of the throat. If you'll fly to Memphis and pray the prayer of faith, I'll send you around your ticket and give you $500. And as the preacher was getting ready to pray the prayer of faith on the phone, he had faith to believe God to do it right there. God said, no. He said, don't pray, you're wasting prayer. That she didn't reject you a year ago, she rejected me. He said, when my anointing was there, she would not receive it. So now, I'll not release it. She died three months later, cancer in the throat. God tried a year before that to stop it. She rejected God. I don't say that to put fear on anybody. But I want you to understand, when you're dealing with God, forget the man for a minute. When you're dealing with God, God got your best interest in behalf. But the Bible said I've been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas. 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's Word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.